Tiger fans, wow. Well, good thing it's been about, I don't know, half hour since the Tigers game ended because if I were to came on here about the fifth inning of this game today, um, I would have probably thrown something. Uh, I've been trying really not to, like, you know, make my videos, like, full of rage and, you know, just cussing because, you know, I want to be just more than a fat kid who makes Tiger videos, but I'm really fucking fed up with this team after a fucking month. Let me tell you that. Today, I just, I'm not even going to talk about the series. I'm just going to talk about the Tigers in general, and let's recap this month. So they end with seven wins. Now, in my Tiger season preview video, I wanted the Tigers to be at least four games under 500, close, you know, close to 500. That way, when they came out of the month, that way they had a fighting chance in hell. They weren't 9 and 23 like they started last year, and their season was pretty much over by the second week of May. Well, the Twins got really hot this month, and they have taken over the Central by a few games. Luckily, the White Sox, who I still think are the best team in the division, they have played like ass, and they have been extremely hurt like the Tigers have. Uh, so we're not too far out when it comes to overall standing in the Central since no one's really played great. The Guardians came out in the start of the in the month, and they played really good, and they had a bunch of offense out of nowhere because of Stephen Kwan and all those guys. But they've since found water. The Royals just came off of uh, a sweep so of the White Sox, so they were playing bad. Bobby Witt's finally finding a swing and whatnot. But the Tigers have just played overall like crap. After that Miggy's 3,000th hit game, oh, we're going to talk about Miggy Cabrera in this video. After that Miggy 3,000th hit game, the Tigers lost six straight games. They scored 13 runs in the first game of that, and then they scored 10 their next six. So what I want to do is, is I want to go player by player on the everyday guys and just talk about what's going on with each one of those guys and my frustrations. First off, overall team, play fucking defense. For fuck's sake, if I watch one more goddamn throw by Barnhart, by Javier Baez, by Jamer Candelario, if I watch one more of these guys throw the ball up the baseline, almost killed Harold Castro today, almost got Spencer Torkelson killed multiple times this season by throwing the ball into the runner's base path, making the first baseman have to reach their hand in in the point of getting run over by the base person, by the base runner. There was a game just the other day where they were against the Twins where there was two straight bunts. Both times the ball hit the runner. Barnhart is supposed to be a gold glove catcher. How fucking hard is it to get the ball? I understand the speed of the runner, but to get the ball and you're supposed to run around the fucking base runner's path. You're not supposed to throw into it. You're supposed to get the ball fielded in front of you and throw it to the side to give yourself a, a spot to throw. Throwing the ball into the base runner because you're trying to get that cheap bullshit interference call isn't going to do anything. Especially when the base runner is actually, because the Tigers looked out today, they had that call go, go for them today against the Dodgers. But you're supposed to get the ball in front of the plate and get to the side. That way you can throw inward and not at the base runner. They can't field anything. Jammer Candelario today. This guy has had so many fucking errors at third. And it's blowing my mind because Jammer's a good third baseman. That was his thing. He's really good at getting everything hit at him. His range isn't the most amazing left to right, but he's got a good arm and he hits everything hit at him. That's his strength. Today there's a ball at Erod's on the mound and he bobbles it on what it should have been an inning and a double play and then they get three earned runs off, earned runs off of it. You know, and it's just like... They can't play defense, whether it's the ball where Tyler Alexander dropped, whether it's the game the other day where they had four errors, four fucking errors. All they talked about by getting Javier Baez, and Baez had a ball go through the five hole today. And Baez, you know, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but he can't throw anything on the money. Everything he throws is in the dirt. And thank God Spencer Torkelson has been really good at getting the ball out of the dirt. That is one of Spencer Torkelson's best things he's able to do. He's got really soft hands, and he's really good at the pick play where you're picking it up out of the dirt. And thank God they got him over there, someone with soft hands, or else the Tigers would be fucked. Majorly fucked because they would have had so many throwing errors already. Spencer Torkelson has saved a lot of errors this year. The only thing on Torkelson is, I would say, defensively he's doing bad is getting balls in foul ground. That's the one thing he does. But Baez can't throw a ball on the money. Everything he throws is right in the dirt. Candelario can't make the throw from third. 
no one is hitting on this team. You know, it's it's just been awful. And we were we were told when we got by as the defense was going to be better. They're going to turn so many more double plays. They were last in the league last year, one of the worst teams in uh, turning the double play. They're still fucking bad at it. They're still fucking bad at it. There's been no improvement so far. One month in, no improvement so far. And I'm not making excuses this video. The last couple videos, you know, oh, it's cold. Blah, blah, blah. No, fuck that. They've been bad. Their defense has been terrible. Absolutely dog shit. You can't expect to not have a repeat of last year when you're 9-23. and 23, When you're going to play baseball like this. All we were told is how much better defensively this team's going to be. Blah, blah, blah. It's been horrific. They're among the worst teams in baseball for hitting home runs. I think they got nine home runs as a team uh, because Miguel Cabrera just hit one today. whoop de doo his lone extra base hit this month. They are absolutely anemic top to bottom. It's basically Austin Meadows. Baez strikes out twice. He gets a meaningless fucking hit besides, you know, the hit the other day against the Dodgers and the Twins. He's always had a couple of big hits, but he'll get a meaningless hit in there. And then you'll have a surprise hit from Harold Castro. Eric Haas is lost at the plate. Akil Badu, you might as well tell him the right bat from the fucking right side of the box because he is lost, lost at the plate. So let's start going over this. Tucker Barnhart, he had a really bad month uh, from when he did play, but he actually played pretty right, all right this, this series against the Dodgers. Uh, he was hitting like well under 200. Now he's up to three, but you know, you got to understand now this is, you know, not Dodger updated stats. I'm looking at a baseball reference, but you know, he was only has 42 plate appearances. You get five hits in the series. You know, you're going to go from 200 to, yeah, I think he's going to be batting over three and his on base is close to 400. So he's starting to pull out of it a little bit. Thank God, because right now, you know, Dustin Garneau has been used for one of the only bright spots of Bo, uh, for Bo Brisky and Eric Haas can't hit water if he fell out of a fucking boat right now. Spencer Torkelson, here we go. Let's start after Tucker Barnard. Let's start talking about the position player. Spencer Torkelson. You guys know I love Spencer Torkelson. You guys know I'm big on this guy, but Spencer, I'm super, super. He's got five, he's got 10 walks and 25 strikeouts. I'm really happy that he has got that many walks in, in 74 plate appearances. But you got to start swinging at pitches you can do damage on. Like, I get you're seeing the league, all these pitchers, most of these pitchers for the first time ever. But you have to start pitching, hitting the pitches you're supposed to do damage on. This is every Spencer Torkelson at bat. Slider away, takes it. Slider away, takes it. Fastball up, foul tip. Fastball up, foul tip. Then he'll get, he'll lay off the slider. Then he'll get... Even in the count. Maybe they'll throw a fastball inside. Then they'll go fastball up. Inside. Miss. Then the 3-2 pitch every single time. Slider away. Or 2-2 pitch. Slider away. And all what he's trying to do every single time after he gets the count even is trying to work a walk. And he's taking these pitches. There was the other day he was up in the count 3 or 2-0. -oh, and there's a pitch right down the middle. Middle in. And he fouled it. What'd they do? They went middle up. Fouled it. Then he was all of a sudden, he was 3-2 after he was 3-0. What do they do? Slider away. Takes it. Strike three. I wish I had a heat map right now of, of, of what Ty Torkelson's hitting on sliders. Because I guarantee you it ain't much. It isn't much at all. Because every single at-bat, Spencer Torkelson strikes out on a slider away. And he doesn't even strike out swinging. They're either getting him out, striking out swinging up. Or he's literally strike out looking every single time. Slider away. On the outside, he, he doesn't swing at it. And what I don't get is, is Spencer Torkelson's got power to right field. He just hit a home run on Mickey's 3,000th day to right field. His power alley is right center. Slider away. Fucking flick the ball the other fucking way. That's your strong point. Literally right field. Strike out looking. Slider away. Every single time. But, you know, I'm going to give him a little bit of leeway. Not just because I like him. Because he's, like I said... If Spencer Torkelson wasn't as good as he's been at first base and scooping the ball out of the dirt with how shitty the infielders have been, I would hate to see the Tigers record now. Because, wow. You know, but he needs to start doing damage on pitches that are, are pitches he should be doing damage on. He's a goddamn good hitter. And he's got a lot of power. And he's looking for his fastball. If you got such a good eye and you're getting count and leverage, 
You need to fucking be ready to hit your fastball because that's the whole point of having count leverage. That's the whole point of taking pitches to get the pitch you want, to make the fucking pitcher throw you a fastball instead of trying to get you up with breaking balls. But no, he just takes it or he misses it. He keeps missing his fastball. And then taking a slider away for strike three. Every time. That's been Spencer Torkelson's thing. And I'm really happy they sat him down. Jonathan Scope. Wow. He's got a sub-500 OPS. So let's let's just start there. Where's that? He's at uh, sub-400 OPS. He's at uh, a 398 OPS and a 21 OPS plus. He's literally 80% worse than the league average hitter right now. Jonathan Scope. Right now, you could give this motherfucker a boat oar, a boat oar, and he couldn't hit a fucking fastball if you tried. The swings, you see signs and glimpses of him, you know, maybe starting to see the ball well, but you might as well be having him up there pretending he's Ray Charles and singing Georgia at the plate because he's fucking blind. He's fucking blind right now. He can't hit whatsoever. And this is who Scope is, you know? And it's like, I have my faith in Scope. And I'm not trying to come on here, at guys, and dog the team. Because, like, we all know they've been playing bad. And we're all frustrated they've been playing bad. The Tigers are frustrated they're playing bad. But it needs to be sad right now. He has just been terrible. And, you know, this is a bat they desperately need. Because, you know, really last year, he had a good season. But the bulk of his season was at one month where he had 12 home runs. You know, and the rest of it was just kind of sprinkled production. But the one thing he did do is when he wasn't hitting home runs and his power cooled off, he could still at least get extra base hits. And he was good, you know, at least getting you some uh, some singles in big situations and, and doubles in the gap. But he ain't doing anything. This guy right now, he's begging for a ball past the pitcher's mound. He's begging to hit the ball. He's just been so bad. Luckily, his defense, he's been one of the few infielders that have been actually okay at playing infield right now. So he needs to start hitting, but he's been abysmal this month. Then we go to Javier Baez. Javier Baez, weird month because he had that nine-game stretch where he jammed his thumb on opening day when he hit that walk-off and, you know, he hurt his hand. He had some big hits this month. You know, he had that hit against uh, on opening day. That was the walk-off hit. He had that big home run, first first home run against the Red Sox that netted one of the Tigers, one of their very few wins of the month. Um, and then he had that big hit the other day where, you know, against the Twins in a game they should have won. And what do the Tigers do? Fucking Robbie Grossman hits it off the glove and then throws it in. Tail of a relay throw. That's another thing. Outfield defense on his team. Holy fuck. Fuck, do they need Riley Green so bad because they need to get a kill but do out of center and like, like, really, really, really bad. They don't have a center fielder on this team. I thought Badu could play center field. No, no, he can't. He is not good in center field. Like, I don't, I don't know how someone that fat, like, I don't know if it's because how bad he's hitting at the plate, it's coming over in his defense. I don't know. You know, Robbie Grossman isn't that good defensively, you know, numbers wise, but usually he's pretty good at balls hit right at him. You know, he's. He's a guy that you can expect to make that kind of a play, but it hit right off his glove because he took a bad route to the ball. Then a terrible relay throw in. Then Scope had a terrible throw to Haas at the plate. And then what does Eric Haas do? The old Ole over the third baseman's head into the fucking outfield when they had the Twins dead to rights because none of the Twins knew where they fucking were on the field. Again, the defense cost him. And what does that lead to? The Tigers getting swept in Minnesota because Max Kepler goes Barry Bonds over the last two fucking days and hits three home runs. It's ridiculous. But anyway, so Javier Baez has been, he's been really the only, the only, on a team that's powerless, he's been the only like little flicker of a ball almost burnt out, flickering any kind of extra base hits. You know, he had uh, a, a, a couple doubles. You know, how many doubles does he have? I'm looking at the numbers right now. My dumb ass just looks down. So he's had three doubles, which is the most on the team. Actually, Tyler Candelario, fucking surprising. You know, two home runs. 326 OBP, which is pretty good for him, and he's slugging 500 with a 148 OPS plus. So, you know, he's been one of the only bright spots when he's played. But you know, <laughs> I don't know my team still Javier Baez anything in the strike zone. Like now that I've been watching him for uh, every single day, you know, literally, honest, I have. They just need to film sliders every single time because he's gonna miss every single time. But seems somehow, you know, instead of going away, they'll get him to swing at a pitch in the opposite hitter's batter's box. 
and then they'll throw him another one that's a little closer, and then he'll, he'll foul off a couple ones, and then they'll try to get him out with a fastball, he'll tip it, and then they'll give him a, another slider, but not throw it out just as far. Like, just keep throwing it until he can't hit it. He can't hit it. Why are you even bring it closer to him? If I was a pitcher pitching to Javier Baez, that guy would see nothing but sliders low and away. Because he can't hit it. I don't know why teams just don't do that. But, you know, they have. That's what they do. But thank God, you know, he's been doing that something. Then we get to Jamer Candelario, another one, sub 450 OPS. He's got a 30 OPS, 36 OPS plus. He's been brutal be He's been brutal at third. He's been brutal behind uh, at the dish. He he's just and he's a a big bat that the Tigers need because over the last two years, Jamer's been the best hitter on the Tigers, the most consistent overall hitter, all around hitter. Because last year he was one of the best hitters in the entire game of baseball, hitting doubles. You need that kind of bat back. You know this team. I, what I thought was going to have at least four twenty home run guys. Fuck, I want someone to hit a home run. 420 home run guys. <laughs> I get like four guys on the team total have a homer. It's been so fucking bad. But they need they need Jamer's bat back. They need Jamer to start at getting some kind of extra base hits. They need Jamer to start hitting. You know, because he's been their most overall best hitter over the last couple of years. And with him and Scope both being down, I mean that lineup is so and and, and, and Torkelson striking out as much as he is. There's just, it's like literally like Baez and Meadows. And, oh, hey, Hayden Harold. let's hope he does something. A miracle performance out of someone else in the lineup. Maybe Jamer will, will nick a ball. But, I mean, it's literally been the offense. They've been that bad. But they need him going. Austin Meadows, been a complete guy. I have nothing but positive things to say about him so far. Meadows right now is slash coming into today was 328, 434. 422 slug, uh, 163. The only thing about Meadows is, is he's already got two triples and two doubles, so he's got four extra base hits. But <clears throat> I'm going to give Meadows a little bit of a pass for the power outage, and here's why. Because Meadows by now would have played, you know, what, 12 games inside the uh, Tropicana field, so he would have been playing in a controlled environment. He would only had a few games, you know, in the cold so I'm going to give Meadows a little bit of a pass because he's playing in somewhere in Detroit where it's been brutally cold. The Tigers have literally only played a couple of warm games all year, uh, most of them being at the Dodgers, but a couple of warm games at Comerica Park. So I think right now Meadows is a bit of an adjustment period. But let's see, he's got 10 strikeouts to 10 walks. So he's been seeing the ball extremely well, you know, and I think – as it warms up, I think his power is going to come there because I think you now after a full month of playing in, in extremely cold weather and, and really no warm places for the first time ever consistently for this time in the season. It's like I said, playing in Florida, playing in, in the trot for the last couple of years. You know, now it's like cold ass Detroit, cold ass Minnesota. You know, it's I think with him, you know, clearly he's seeing the ball well, ten to ten, uh, exactly one to one walk walk to strikeout ratio. So I'm not too worried about his power coming around. I think he's he just needs to get that one. I think right now he's like, fuck, it's been you know a whole month that I don't even have a home run yet. This is a guy that hit over 30 before. I think he just he needs to, once the, the warms up a little bit and he gets that first one out of the way, watch out because he's going to be hitting. But he's looked really good this year, all around really good. He's been the brightest spot on the team. And that trade, thank God Avila got him because, wow, can you imagine a team without Austin Meadows? So... Uh, Akil Badu, been horrible. You can't start – he's not hitting righties. You can't even think about starting him against lefties. He's been bad in center field. Uh, let's see, well, 120 – what's his OPS? He's got a 22 OPS plus, another one almost 80% worse than the league average player. It's been horrible. He hit all of his all of his bombs in spring. But hopefully he's another one. You know, he hit all his bombs in spring where it was warm. Hopefully when it warms up a little bit, you know, this in this coming month, he starts hitting better because it's going to be fucking hard to hit any worse. That's for sure. He's been so bad. Robbie Grossman, another guy that had a little bit of injury, really struggled the first couple weeks, but he's really pulled it off the last week. He's looked a lot better, 288, 394 OBP. Slugging has definitely been down. He's got a 322 slugging percentage at a 716 OPS, but... 
besides that one era in, in Minnesota, he's he's been really the only guy that the that Hinch could put at the top of the lineup right now because Badu has just been so bad. So, you know, thank God he's starting to come out of it. And, you know, he here's to hoping that he puts one in the seats soon because he hit a ball at Comerica Park at the start of the month. I think in the opening series, that would have been a home run at every ballpark except Comerica Park. It was against Kansas City uh, that he hit a ball to the warning uh, to the warning track that would have been a home run at every park but Kaufman. And uh, yeah, I, he's been he's been pretty good. You know, he's fun, he's been good at the top of the order. And thank God that you know this is someone because basically it's him, Baez, and uh, Meadows. They've been the only three guys that have been worth a shit so far. Then Miguel Cabrera. I love Miguel Cabrera. I, I sing his praise. You know, I am so grateful for everything he's done for the franchise. But Miguel Cabrera needs to be batting eighth or ninth. Like, Miguel Cabrera has no power left in his bat. If Miguel Cabrera hit seven home runs this year, I will be surprised. Because every single time he comes up the plate, he's trying to do nothing but be Placido Polanco, where he hits the ball in between second and first. Listen, I understand the the triple crown Miguel Cabrera is never coming back. I understand he's 38 years old. But Christ, there's got to be something left in that bat where we can actually hit a double. He had one extra base hit. And I don't know if it was just because he was trying to get the 3,000 hits and he was just trying to dink and dunk every single ball to get the, you know, what was it, the 13 hits that he needed to get the 3,000 at the start of the year. Fine, great. But every you look at his hits this year. He's got an infield single, like that one against the Yankees when he had three for four. He had an infield single. He had a, a broken bat uh, single. Everything. You don't even see him drive the ball. It's like having Placido Polanco or Don Kelly at the plate. That's how anemic his bat has been. Like, guys, he's slugging. This is Miguel Cabrera. He's slugging 290. Miguel Cabrera is slugging 290. He needs to be batting 8th or ninth. I don't give a shit if he has 3,000 hits. He can't drive the ball. You don't put someone who runs like a fucking turtle who can't even drive the ball in the middle of your order anymore. Like, he needs to be moved down. He can't hit with any kind of authority. I was fucking floored when he hit that home run today. Now, my dude was in garbage time when the Tigers were already down six runs, but I was floored. He has shown no ability to drive the baseball with any kind of authority. He can't hit any kind of fastballs. The guy is literally going up there every single time, hoping they pitch him middle away so he can just go into right field, right center field, and getting cheap hits. You see, any kind of pitch that's in, inside beats him, especially with velocity, beats him every single time. He has no bat speed left. He has no lower half left. His legs are done. Go and look at some of these hits. How many hits does he have in the first month? 16. Go and look at some of the game logs of some of these hits and how weak they've been. All weak ground balls passed, passed the second baseman. Little dink shots over the first baseman's head. Little dink shots over the second baseman's head. Like I said, he's got an infield single this year. He had that broken back. He has no power left, guys. And he needs to get moved down in the lineup, which is why Candelario and Scope coming back and, and Spencer Torkelson started to hit the ball with any kind of authority is fucking paramount. Absolutely excruciatingly paramount. Because this team has nobody that has power right now. They aren't driving the ball. They have no extra base hits. Their offense has been abysmally bad. Cabrera can't hit anymore. He is like having a Don Kelly at the plate. He's like having Ramon Santiago at the plate. He's like having Plasto Polanco at the plate. Guys that used to hit five home runs a year. He has no legs left. He has no power left. And until he shows that he, he, I mean, he's literally one double away from 600. And he can't buy a ball out of the infield that's not like a little flare bloop. I have yet to see him rip a ball with any kind of authority I wish I had the stat cast of up. I want to see how many balls Miguel Cabrera's hit over 95 miles per hour exit below because I guarantee you it's less than 10. Guarantee right now. It's less than 10. 
And I love Miguel Cabrera. And I'm not trying to dog him and shit on his accomplishments. But if you, you we need someone to step up in this lineup and do something because he needs to get bumped down like seventh, eighth in the lineup. The only thing that Miguel Cabrera, about having him like maybe sixth, is any beneficial is he is pretty good when guys are trying to sneak fastballs by him. As long as it's on the middle third, middle third and outer and, and dink it into right field, you know, and get big hits. Sometimes, but just straight up having him number three, number four, it's you, you can't have someone slugging 300 and, as your fucking four hole hitter, your five hole hitter. He's been, he's, you, they got to do something. They need one of those guys, Torkelson, Candelario, Scope. They need someone to step up because Cabrera, I'm telling you, if he hit the way he's hitting right now, if he hits seven home runs, I will be floored because he has nothing left in his legs. Nothing. Eric Haas, I love Eric Haas, but he's been trash. I'm not even wasting my time, not even reiterating. He's fucking strike out every single time. He's been fucking trash. Can't can't hit fastballs right now. Hitting Harold Castro. He's been um been a positive. He's been very good so far when you put him in the lineup, uh, uh, getting a couple of cheap hits there or two. Uh, he's absolutely terrible anywhere you put him in the outfield. If you put him in the outfield, he's really bad. If you put him at first base, he's really bad. And if you put him at third base, he's really bad. So... Yeah, a guy that can actually hit a little bit, but you can't put him anywhere because he can't play a defensive position. Yeah, Derek Hill. Uh, he's been really good at getting bunt base hits. Uh, that's really all I got to say about him. Willie Castro already got options, so I'm going to waste my time. Dustin Garneau, he basically starts for Bo Brisky. All right, let's start running through this a little bit quicker. Tarek Skubal been one of the only bright spots. Uh, in the in the rotation, he's been really good. His last time out, his defense fucked him royally, but he's been extremely good. Erod today, uh, he's given up the most unearned runs in baseball so far. Uh, overall, he has been absolutely horrible in his first five starts as a Tiger. Today, he was okay. Uh, if you look at how bad his defense fucked him, but he did, you know, in the sixth inning, start to implode a little bit. But he hasn't had one start where you go, oh, wow. Yeah. And this is exactly what I said when the Tigers signed him. When he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. And there's no in-between. If, if he has the stuff, you're fine. But if he doesn't, you're fucked. Like, essentially, that's it. And I said this when the Tigers signed him. Like, I wasn't, like, jumping for joy. Like, you know, I was like, cool. You're going to get a guy that's going to throw 180 innings, but you don't know what you're getting every single time out there. You know, he's going to go through a five-star stretch this season where he, he has a, a sub-three ERA. Yeah. But now you're seeing a five-star stretch right now, and it could be even longer, of, of getting shit-wrecked. And that's Erod in a nutshell. And that's why Boston didn't sign him. Tyler Alexander, he's been absolutely horrible so far this year. I'm not wasting my time talking about that guy who I can't wait till they put him in the bullpen. Casey Mize sucks. He was, you know, pitching pretty good and, uh, until, you know, it looked like he was starting to come around after his first couple of starts. Uh, and then he got hurt with that elbow sprain. He's been throwing in Florida. Uh, Hopefully he's back sometime soon. He's probably going to make a couple of rehab starts. Michael Pineda, for a guy that has uh, had minimal time to get ready during spring, he's pitched really good. I mean, his last time out against the Twins, he gave up a couple homers. But, I mean, he's given you some innings already. He's already got, let's see, eight. He's already got ten innings uh, and a couple of starts. So, you know, you can't really complain about that. Bo Brisky, my guy, Bo Brisky. Guys, if there's a guy who I really want to sing his praise, Wow, Bo Brisky has been super, 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 super good. Bo Brisky so far, both times in his both of his first uh, first and second starts, he gives up the home run to the leadoff guy, and he's been tough as nails. I mean, that start against Colorado doesn't look amazing, but he was good. The kid's curveball is so good. His changeup is phenomenal. Good mid nineties fastball. He's got a decent slider, but that changeup curveball fastball that's gonna play. And for the Tigers to get this guy as late as they did, that just goes to show you how much of a pitching farm they've started to develop between the big three that we have up, Mize Manning and Scooble, Nicey, Bo Brisky, and hopefully Joey Wentz and, and Alex Fiedo is in AAA right now. They still got some arms we haven't heard about or haven't been as touted that it might be still be pretty fucking good. And Bo Brisky is one of them. I was extremely impressed, and I wish I could find one of his autographs because he's really good, and I love the kid's demeanor on the mound. He's constantly, we had an interview with him today, he's constantly talking about how he wants to get better and how he doesn't feel he's done the best he could. 
I love his attitude. I love his demeanor. I love how he's not pouting on the mound and all that kind of stuff. When stuff happens to him or seems rattled, he's like, give me the ball. I'm going to throw this motherfucker right past you. And he's just got good stuff. I like Bo Brisky a lot. So let's see how the league adjusts him, though. But I like Bo Brisky a lot so far. Uh, Gregory Soto, he's been good. He had that, un, you know, he's had some issues with walks, but that's Soto. Soto is always going to walk, guys. Uh, other than that, you know, thing in, in Minnesota, he's been pretty good. Already got three saves. Michael Fulmer, been absolutely outstanding. Joe Jimenez, wow. Where the hell did old all-star Joe come from? Because he's been really, really good. Jacob Barnes has been super good. Alex Lang has been super good. Drew Hutchinson has been super good. Will Vess has been super good. Willie Peralta has been super good. Andrew Chafin, after, you know, gave up a run his first time out, coming back, he's been super good. The Tigers. This is how, you know, things in Tigerland are way up on the other side of the access. The Tigers have always had a shitty bullpen. Now, they have the one of the best bullpens in the entire MLB, and they can't hit worth a shit. Now, when they can actually secure leads and hold one, two, three run leads, they can't score enough runs to even get the ball to their strength. It just it's that's what it's like right now watching this team and that's what it's right now for this team they can't even score enough runs to even to even utilize what their strongest asset has been and that's been their bullpen being able to lock down games being able to shut out other teams because their bullpen's been used a lot but they've been having good performance after good performance after good performance if they could just hit a little bit and get a little bit they have a strength now Get five innings out of their starter and turn it over to what their strength is, their bullpen, locking out games because they have so many arms back there right now that are doing a great job. And this is without Jose Cisnero too. But their offense has been so bad and their starting pitching has been so inconsistent, they can't even utilize what their best asset is, and that's their their bullpen. So that's really about it, guys. I'm not going over anyone else. Is this video long enough? But, like I said, I'm not trying to shit on this team. Do I think they're going to be better? Yes. Can they play this bad for this long? I want to say no, but they're not showing any signs of anything. But they've just been so bad, so inconsistent. They have so many inconsistencies in their lineup. There's so, been so many injuries. Like, I cannot wait for Riley Green to be off this IL stint. And in center field, so some of these guys can get put in spots. They're not as bad defensively. They need their offense to improve, you know, because they have a lockdown bullpen. It's just been, I think, between all the injuries, all the lineup shuffling, trying to get some combination of hitters together with how inconsistent the lineup has been. It's just been a lot of work, and it's been pretty hard on AJ to find the right combination. He's trying everything he can. I mean, he can only write so many different lineups, only put guys in so many different spots. You know, it's not him out there hitting the ball and pitching the ball. So do I think this is going to last? No. You know, this team is is a better team than they were last year. And last year, you know, they won 77 games. You look at that after the 9-23 start, they're really good. And this team is by far more talented than that. And they have good aspects of this team, like the bullpen and their young starters. And they have some good hitters on this team that just haven't showed it. Jamer is not a guy that's going to hit as bad as he's hitting. And Scope is a guy that's always shown power. You know, and Badu I'm a little worried about because he's at the point now where, you know, last year he was really good. But, you know, maybe he has a sophomore slump. Who knows? You know, he didn't play a lot of games above A ball. You know, so I don't know. But this first month was brutal. And here's the hope that fucking May is better. Because I'll be Christ watching that first month was awful. So that's all I got for you guys today. Sorry about the length of this video. But what I said needed to be said. And uh, what are your guys' thoughts so far? Weird frustrations and everything else. Comment below. Appreciate all you guys watching. Have a good one. Go Tigers.